Conference Championship Week in college basketball. What a glorious time it is. You will see conference tournament games that matter the most starting at 11.30 a.m. Eastern on this Tuesday and for the next six days up until Selection Sunday, through Selection Sunday, I should say, we have college basketball games at the D1 level on the men's side starting no later than noon Eastern time. It is a ceremonious time. It is almost like a holiday. It is March. And starting today, although it's the worst teams in those leagues, the high majors enter the fold during conference championship week as well. The ACC and Big 12 both begin today. The Big East, Big 10, Pac-12, and SEC all start on Wednesday as well. Some of the best teams in those leagues, like in the Big 10, the Big 12, and the uh, SEC, with the teams that finish one through four, they won't be in action. They earned a double bye all the way to the quarters on Friday, but still teams trying to make a run in their conference tournament, either to solidify their NCAA tournament resume, maybe pick up some more quad one, quad two, quality wins to appeal to the committee, or maybe make it a run at winning the whole thing and be a bid stealer and earn an automatic berth to the big dance. Yeah, and that's what most people are watching this week. Now, granted, sometimes, you know, people are college basketball fans, but don't get to watch these teams all the way through. The conference tournament puts every single team in that conference in the same playing field on the same court. So you try to measure up and almost get that precursor to the yeah. tournament. Neutral court site, how do they handle their business? Hot teams going in, people love that. But also keep in mind, we take a look at guys with like the bracket matrix and the bracketology. This is such a big win, yeah. a big week here, I should say, for the teams that we don't think are going to get those automatic bids, which means means the bid stealers here so if you are conferences out there and you are on the bubble talking to you indiana state right now do you know who you're cheering for oh, north carolina houston uconn <laughs> purdue arizona tennessee <laughs> you don't want to see the pittsburgh panthers or maybe you no. know somebody coming up that's on that bubble with you taking away that automatic win that's what's so much fun and also just eyeing up day to day some of these teams like the villanova wildcats in the big east they need a couple wins probably in the big east tournament here there's so many yep. things to watch than just the teams that win the tournament where just winning a game or two puts you in the tournament i love this week ben i do it is a really good point. If you are a team on the bubble, either at the high or mid-major level, and your conference tournament action ends early, Arch Madness, Missouri Valley Conference Tournament, was over the weekend, Indiana State falling just short to Drake. They still deserve, deserve an at-large bid, in my estimation. You are hoping the favorites run through the gauntlet. Even if a bid stealer gets close, they come up short but it's important from the handicapping perspective to know the motivation and know what is at stake for each individual matchup throughout conference championship week sure you can look at the future odds can Villanova make a run in the big east they might just have to get to the tournament final might be the same in the ACC for teams like Syracuse or Pittsburgh to solidify their resume but individually you can also focus on a matchup that might mean everything it's a win and in type game for instance Thursday at the Big East tournament myself and our producer Joe Frizo will be there inside Madison Square Garden St. John's and Seton Hall Thursday afternoon that's virtually a play-in game to the NCAA tournament. The winner should be in to the big dance. The loser will have a nervy couple of days until Selection Sunday. So, Donnie, we showed you the favorites at the high major level, the power six in men's college basketball. UNC, now the favorites to win the ACC to the top overall seed. Houston, even money favorite, plus 100, the top seed in the Big 12. UConn, the number one seed in the Big East, the reigning champs, minus 150. Purdue, Top team in the Big Ten, even money, plus 100. Same for Arizona, same for Tennessee. Both the number one overall seeds in their respective conference tournaments. The Cats at minus 150, the Vols plus 175. And don't just think, because those favorites are the one seed, they've won a regular season crown, they don't have anything on the line this week. They could be playing for the position in the bracket, the seed line, trying to get a number one seed, trying to clinch a number one seed. So much motivation. Conference championship week. No, there is. And also, I 
I, this is going to be interesting to watch it play out because the teams that you just brought yeah. up there in the big time conferences, right? I think those teams deservedly being the favorites here. I don't think you can go wrong. Let's just say if you bet every single conference right. and just took the favorites here, I think you would come out with plus money because, quite frankly, you're not betting minus six fifties here. You're getting good prices, and the highest favorite that you will pay would be on Arizona in the Pac-12 and also at UConn in the Big East here. Both of those teams listed at a minus one fifty price. But your point is valid here. The conference week is so big on so many levels. As you pointed out, you might have a playing game right off the bat. Win this game, and you probably think you're in the tournament. Forget about even winning the Big East tournament per se, right? Win a couple yeah. games here. Improve your seed line, which then brings up the next issue. If you are, and also a lot of prestige comes with this as well, being a number one seed goes on your resume as a head coach, even if it doesn't equate to a Final Four run or even a championship at that point. That number one seed is certainly important, but also keep in mind, yeah. just feasibility, Ben, of making it to a Final Four and winning a championship. The higher your seed line, theoretically, the easier opponents are to get through to said Final Four or a national championship game or even cutting down the nets. So you're right. You're not looking at it saying like, oh, well, Carolina won the regular season. They're just fine. They have a legitimate chance here to run through the ACC and be a number one seed. The motivation yeah. is there across the board for everybody. Teams like Purdue, teams like UConn, they want that number one overall seed. It's not like, ah, we'll be on the one line yeah. if we just make it maybe a game or two in the tournament. Nonsense. You are going to get the best of the best going against the best on a night-to-night basis where everybody cares about these games. I love this stuff. I am sure we will dive a little bit deeper into these conference tournament odds yeah. at the high major level tomorrow when four of the six get underway. Both the ACC and Big 12 begin their conference tournaments today. However, I just want to say this. The SEC is tightly compact at the top. Those top four seeds, all a $5 price or less. Tennessee, the favorite, plus 175. Less than a buck behind the Auburn Tigers at plus 240. Kentucky, 4-1. to one. Alabama, 5-1. to one. And I do want to give you some long shots that are playing their best basketball right now that probably are not in the NCAA tournament at this moment. And I think unless they win their conference tournament, would not make it into the big dance. But out of the Big Ten, Ohio State, under interim head coach Jake Diebler, has won five of six games. They're a 31 to 30 to 1 price to win the Big Ten. A dismal year last year in Columbus. They made it all the way to the Big Ten tournament title game against Purdue, coming up short as well. And Donnie has mentioned the USC Trojans a few times, and I think it bears repeating. USC is on a streak here to end out the regular season. Winners of four of their last five, a huge upset over Arizona on Saturday night. 20 to 1, the number on Southern Cal. There is a lot of talent for the Trojans. They were not all healthy throughout the year, but Boogie Ellis is back. Isaiah Collier is back. Ronnie James will be a factor. They are a team to pay attention to in the Pac-12, especially with Arizona, the odds-on favorite at minus 150. I like where you're going, too, because you're taking a look at some big prices here. And also, this isn't the culmination of 20 games, Ben. You just got to win a couple games in a row. And if that top seed gets knocked out, now you're live with some of these numbers. We talked about, you know, making money possibility on the Miami Hurricanes and the ACC if they ever got healthy. Turns out they're probably never going to get healthy at this point. Nigel Pack went off. He's going to play today. Wuga Poplar missed a couple games. They were embarrassing in their last couple games down the stretch. Quite frankly, I don't think Miami's even won in the past month at this point. So that's might be one of those that you remove from the equation. But teams in the Big 12, you want to talk about those second liners, really good basketball teams. Houston is a plus 100 to win that tournament. You take a look at Iowa State at plus 430. But look after that. Baylor, 6-1 to one price. BYU at 11-1. to one. Yeah. And also keep in mind, Kansas is going to be down for the count in this tournament at 13-1 to one, who maybe would have been a player there. So that's why I look at Baylor and BYU. If you want to pull yeah. the upset, how is it done here? elite three-point shooting and shooting at volume. That's what BYU gives you. If they knock down 50% of the three-point shots shooting 25 or more of those, good luck beating them. The same thing with the Baylor Bears, one of the best three-point shooting teams in the country. So you're trying to look for those second levels with those big prices. And also, Ben, something that we always preach as well, Ben's not looking for USC to win the Pac-12 championship. Ben is saying, I'm going to take a 20-to-1 price, win a couple games, and the FanDuel Sportsbook goes, okay, Ben, you bet X amount of dollars here. Here's your profit if you take it. And if you take it, that's a winning ticket here. Not like, aha, Ben, you dummy. You took USC. They didn't win. Then you show them the receipts going, no, I absolutely won at this point. So taking the bigger numbers doesn't have to cash in the end with a championship win. You just got to turn it into a profit. That's what you're looking to do.
Try to get to semifinal Saturday. Conference yeah. tournament title game Sunday and either hedge or cash out mm -hmm. in a big way, especially with those big money numbers. Some other conference tournaments also beginning today or tomorrow. The A-10, man, that's going to be a good one. Dayton the favorite right now. Even if the Flyers were to lose during the conference tournament, I believe they would have enough metrically to be an at-large bid. But keep an eye on Loyola Chicago. They are playing really good basketball right now. And Drew Valentine is a coach to know. CUSA, Louisiana Tech, the favorite, plus 110. The MAC, Fairfield, the favorite at plus 260. The American, also interesting. South Florida, the top seed, FAU, last year's Cinderella's plus 170. The Mountain West is going to be a gauntlet. San Diego State enters as the favorite at plus 240, but anybody can win it, as we saw each and every night in the Mountain West. Teams that are maybe on the bubble trying to solidify or earn a berth. Nevada, you could look at New Mexico. Some motivation there, certainly at stake. And in the Western Athletic Conference, the WAC, Grand Canyon, one of the best teams this year with some of the most wins in college basketball and odds on minus 150 favorite. And by the way, just take a look at that A-10 tournament. Always had an affinity to that because back in the day, the Temple Owls under John Chaney there would rumble with Calipari's oh. UMass Minutemen. But if you're looking at the top, like Dayton has always been a good program, plus 170 to win that conference. But now look down the list. VCU is always a perennial contender. Eight to one price here. St. Bonaventure was tremendous for a couple years here. 12 to one price. You slide it down Davidson with McKillop back in the day. 45 to one to win that conference. And Rhode Island, who was trying to make runs to the final four, 200 and yeah. 50 to one in that conference. Boy, some of the times change here, but also big prices all the way around. And talking about bid stealers, they're out there this week. So beware. We're going to get a lot of alerts there. This is why I love conference championship week. You never know what's going to happen. In the Southland, by the way, McNeese starts their tournament today as the one seed. They got to buy all the way to the semifinals under Will Wade. The Stangs. They're playing some basketball, minus 430. I know it's minus 430, but I still think I might lay it with McNeese. There is plenty more coming your way around college basketball and here on the early line in just a little bit. I thought we were coming up on the break. My bad. Joe no. Friso, great producing to give us the one-minute look. Some other tournaments that will get started tomorrow. The Big West, the MEAC, the SWAC. The MAC, the Mid-American Conference, the Ivy League only has four teams that will start on Saturday. Four teams that make the conference tournament, I should say. And there are five bids on the line with six tickets already mm. punched into the big dance. Five on the line this Wednesday. WCC, top 25 tilt, a showdown between St. Mary's and Gonzaga. The Zags, the favorites, laying three and a half. Charleston in the CAA. The Colonial laying seven and a half against Stony Brook. How about this for an over-under in the Northeast Conference? 119 and a half for a oh, championship boy. between Merrimack an and Wagner. We'll have plenty more coming your way in just a minute.